thought Mazes and Monsters was a far out game? Swords, poison, battles, maiming, killing. Well, that's nothing compared to the other evil role playing game that not nearly as many people saw Skullduggery. And no, it's not a ripoff or even all that similar. Actually, Skullduggery was made before Mazes and Monsters, and the two movies have almost nothing in common. For instance, Skullduggery is not nearly as good. Well, okay, they do have one thing in common. Wendy Crewson is in both movies. You may remember her as the actress on the other side of this conversation. Hey, I'm in New York. New York? Robbie, are you all right? What happened? I don't know. I can't remember. I mean, Wendy, what happened? Did you get typecast as the worried gamer girlfriend character? Ah! Uh. How jinxed do you have to be to have two shitty Dungeons and Dragons psycho killer movies on your resume? Anyway, you can tell this movie's gonna be really weird right off the bat because of its super funky and insane theme song. hard coming up with lyrics. I mean, what the fuck rhymes with skullduggery? Dull thuggery, ass buggery, motherfuckery. Ooh, why it does appear there's skullduggery afoot after all. Either that or it's some kind of medieval themed cooking show. And then you slow roast the lamb for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Now here's a casserole we started cooking earlier. Just garnish with parsley. Mwah, delicious. Spirit of evil. Dedicating ourselves to thee, we give thanks. Oh, forget it, our cult sucks. Nobody shows up to meetings anymore. Our spirit of evil's just a creepy rubber jester mask we bought at Walgreens for $7.99. Eh, Skaldaggery, this script is terrible. Shall buy the armor from Italy. See. Ah! Ah! I didn't do it! Power is now in these hands, Adam. These hands, which... Uh, oh, hang on. You can't really see my hands back there. Let me just get down there, step over this dead body. I'm so sorry about that. I'm just trying to be dramatic. You will be given a choice. To play. Or die. Pick a card. Any card. No, we've never met before, have we? You must choose. But beware... One of the fruits is poisoned, and if you choose it, the cards will indeed hold the truth. Shouldn't this guy be calling for guards or running for his life or something? They give him a 50-50 shot at eating a poison apple and he's just rolling with it? And then she just stabs him in the heart with a hairpin? I don't know, this footage is so absurdly dark, I can almost never tell what's going on. He chose poorly. I gave your husband his power, on condition that he, in turn, give me his soul. But he betrayed me. I demand the conditions of our agreement be met, and I claim the soul of your unborn child. And I cast the spell on him and his offspring for generations to come. Diabolus me adjuvet, so the devil help me. Fast forward to 1982 and Trottleville? Uh, you're gonna have to give me a state on that one, movie. I can't say I've ever passed through Trottleville. Anyway, this is our, well, I was gonna say hero, but there's no way that term applies. Protagonist? I don't know, that doesn't work either. Uh, this is Adam and his girlfriend Barbara. Poor Barbara just seems drawn to that quiet, unassuming, psychopathic type who can't distinguish fantasy from reality. It's hard to say where the game begins or life ends. Sometimes I feel like one of those figurines on the board. They work together at a costume rental warehouse, mainly so they can steal the medieval clothes and wear them at their D&D sessions. Mr. Sluzerchuk, how do I look? Well, how do I put this politely? Oh, I know. Ah! Ah! Okay, it's... Uh... Your turn. Roll, Adam. Okay. Uh, what character do you want to be? I want to play the warlock. I love the power glove. I want to play the warlock. Great choice, Adam. You got 180 IQ. 18 stamina. 
And a seven charisma. That's the highest score I've ever seen. You couldn't have done much better than that, Adam. Uh, you've never seen higher than a seven charisma on three dice? Plus, with 180 IQ and 18 stamina, the movie seems to imply the guy just rolled straight sixes on three dice twice, and the number she's impressed with is seven charisma? You see, because on three dice, the scores range from three to 18, and seven, you know what, fuck it. Then we cut to some goofy office with weird, out-of-place, sleazy sax music where a mystery man is piecing together a puzzle with the biggest pieces ever! What, did Fisher Price make this thing? And when I say he's piecing it together, I mean he puts one piece down very carefully, then stops. And that's the scene! Whew! That one enormous piece is about all my mind can take right now. Well, if that scene wasn't random enough for you, I fucking dare you to try and tell me what in the fuck this next line is supposed to mean. All right, let's wrap up the game. Chuck, can't you use some other finger, like maybe the middle one? <laughs> what? Chuck, can't you use some other finger, like maybe the middle one? Oh my god, this fucking guy. His gimmick is that he keeps making lame sexual innuendos with every single line. I took care of the white sorceress. Uh, uh, uh. Really? Did you have a good time doing it? <laughs> every... Line. You will outfit the boys and Barbara will give a hand to the girls. Well, can I give a hand to the girls too? I've got a rash on my ankle and it's itching. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I get an itch sometimes too, but uh, not my ankle and uh, I know how to cure it. Ar, 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 ar. Anybody else need a ride? Yeah. Only if I can sit with Barbara in the back seat. And guess which character survives the entire movie? Gah! Hey, Barbara, want to see why they call me BJ? <laughs> You're full of hot air, you know that? Yeah. Want to watch me suck a greyhound bust through a straw? Uh. Is he boasting about his ability to give other men blowjobs in order to impress a woman? It does not compute. Listen, I've uh, got a raccoon in my pants. Would you like to set it free? Good God, I didn't think it was possible to make a character more shallow than fucking Quagmire. Anyway, Adam has to supply costumes to a junior college talent show the next day. Doesn't that sound exciting? Well, too bad, because we get to see fucking all of it. Apparently it's a production involving pirates and a barbershop quartet and clowns and gay sailors. I don't believe it. No dress rehearsal. This low-budget crap wouldn't buy a bag of bird shit. Uh, I know, girlfriend. And then resorting to stock lisping drama fag stereotypes in this movie? Hated it. I can't believe I have to recap what's going on here. So, a fruity magician in a top hat appears, waves his magic wand around, and then makes beer appear and turns the bowl of cotton balls into tortilla chips, although I had to watch the scene three times just to realize that. The editing is so bad, it's hard to tell anything changed at all in this scene. But what kills me is nobody in this room seems at all shocked by a literal miracle occurring in this room akin to Jesus with the loaves and the fishes. Dude just made beer out of nothing! the greatest power imaginable and they're just like hey that's kind of cool whatever what happened here was a miracle and i want you to fucking acknowledge it like okay what the fuck now there's a janitor with a tic-tac-toe board on the back of his jumpsuit it's like someone came up with character concepts by throwing magnetic poetry against a fridge is that still a thing magnetic poetry with the words you put anyone god i'm getting old well, strap in, folks, because this movie has more lame talent show footage than the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies. The first and the best, the one and the only, Simcoe the Magician. 